Hi, it's Dio, and today I'm going to show you all how to make a scales brush in Clip Studio Paint. Um, anyone who's seen my art knows I sometimes draw a lot of like mer creatures and stuff that have scales, and I made this brush to save me some time, and I'm hoping maybe it can help someone else. Um, I don't know how to do it in any other program except Clip, so um, I can't help you on how to do it in GIMP or Photoshop or whatever you use. Um, but I hope this can help you, and if you do find a way to use it in other programs, uh, that's awesome too. Anyway, let's get started. Here's this really stupid doodle here I did um, really quickly just to show how I use the scales brush. And of course you can, you know, it's pre it's a uh, pen pressure sensitive, which is awesome. So you can make them, you know, as big or as small as you want them. Uh, you can also use this um, to make other kinds of scales for, you know, dragons or lizards or whatever else you might want to use. Um, you can actually use this trick in any kind of brush with a pattern. Anyway, let's get started. Get rid of this crap here. <laughs> So first, we're going to draw out the scale. That's the first thing we do. Make a new layer here. And the best way to go about it is to draw half of a scale and then copy and flip it to make sure it's symmetrical. And then you can edit it to meet together in the middle. Like this. Now make sure you combine the layers together so the scale is now on one layer. And we are going to copy it. We're going to make a couple rows. That way um, when we transform it to the pattern it comes out correctly. Probably the fastest way to make these rows is to keep uh, combining the layers together and then copying them so you're copying two and then four and so on until you get a row. Make sure you have a decently long row, that way the scales don't come out so short. I'll show you what I mean. We wouldn't stop at a row this short, make sure it's like decently long. You know, it doesn't have to be across the entire canvas, but, you know, a good, good several comes out the best. Oh, and by the way, my canvas is 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Just to give you an idea of how, how big I set my canvas. So I'm going to copy it probably one more time. And my example looks a little messy, but make sure when you make your scale that you make it exactly how you want it because you can't edit it later. I'm just doing it like this, you know, to show the example properly. This should be fine. I'm gonna get rid of this extra one here too. Yeah, like a row, you know, this long will work. So make sure the first row is all on one layer. Don't leave any straggling layers. And we're gonna copy it again and drag it down this time. But we're not gonna leave it just straight down that's not gonna look right so make sure you have it overlapping like scales actually would and I don't want the scales super long so I'm going to edit it like this Now combine them again, and now we're going to cut off 
um, the edges. Um, I know I didn't say that right, so <laughs> we're gonna kind of do it like this. And now we're going to, um, kind of uh, put the canvas size to just get the scales. Make sure that the top and bottom are as long as you want it to be and make sure it's touching the tip. We don't want it to be cut off or it's gonna look weird. So the top row is gonna have like half and half cut off. That's, that's normal supposed to do that. Now make sure when you crop this, you get it exactly how you want it. You can't undo it later. Alright, and then we're going to take away the paper layer. We want this to be a transparent background or it's going to be messed up. Something about clip uh, clip paint, <laughs> clip studio paint, I'm sorry, is that it, um, has a feature where it remembers what's out, what was outside these borders at one point, um, and we don't want to just save it as a brush like this, or again, it's gonna look quite messed up. So we're going to cut and paste it on a brand new layer and get rid of the layer that it used to be on so it doesn't see the junk outside of this square here. Or again, it's going to look wrong. There, there's a lot of things that can look wrong if you don't do this right. I've learned the hard way. Okay, so now that we have our scales the way we want it, we're going to edit, register material, image. And then these settings down here we're going to use for brush tips shape, not for paper texture. And then we're going to save this. Oh, hang on. Brush. Okay, so image material and then brush. Okay, so now we're going to create the tool. So I like to copy the G pen, but you can copy whichever basic tool you want, really. It doesn't really matter. We're going to right click, duplicate subtool, and then name your brush so you can find it later. I'm gonna put it with a Z <laughs> to show that's not my real one. And then pen, you know, the whatever default settings it was, it's fine, it doesn't really matter. Now go to your new brush, and then there's two wrenches here. We're not going to use this one right now. We we are going to later, and I'll show you when to use that. We're going to go to this set of wrenches here. Uh, sh show sub tool detail, and now we're going to find our brush tip shape. We're going to go to brush tip, and then the material folder. Oh, <laughs> it's this. So find the name of your layer. Um, I didn't name it the first time I couldn't find it. It ended up being under layer one, like a default name. So make sure you name it so you can actually find your darn thing. <clears throat> so scales would be towards the bottom. See, this was my first one and the other attempts I've made and forgot to name them. Okay. Okay. Did I forget to name it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, this is exactly what you don't want to do or you're gonna have a hard time finding it. Because I know there are other ones there, but I want to use the example one I made to keep it consistent. It's probably under layer one or something stupid. Oh, God. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> See, this is why you should name it. <laughs> okay, so now we have this. 
And then we're going to go to stroke, ribbon, and then you're done in here so you can get out of here. And this is where you would use this. You want to lock it because if you don't and you go to another pen, it's going to get rid of all the settings you put in here and that really sucks. So now we're going to test it to make sure it works. And there you have it. Uh, one thing that I probably should have done, which I'll show you. Unlock it. Go back in here. Brush size. Turn it. Turn that sucker all the way up. Because <laughs> then you'll have, you know, more flexibility on how big you want them. If you keep it, like, small, no matter how hard you press, it's not going to get any bigger. So turn it all the way up. And then lock it. Again, make sure you lock it. And then that way you can make it as small as you want. But now you have the option to also make it as big as you want. So there you go. This is what you would do to make a brush in Clip Studio Paint. Anyway, thanks for watching my brush tutorial. I hope it helped some of you. And uh, you have a good day and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.